the host for the 2014 Commonwealth Games will be Glasgow. Seven years ago, Glasgow won the bid to host the 20th Commonwealth Games. This summer, athletes from 70 countries and millions of visitors will pour into the city. And Glasgow's run down East End will get a multi-million pound makeover. But where sporting dreams are made, communities can get destroyed. We are in the way. There's a massive development coming here. There's a machine coming here. It's called the Commonwealth Games. Of course, we're in the way. For the last four years, we've followed the people of Dumarnock and Glasgow's East End, the epicenter of the Games this summer. With the Games comes big opportunities. I'm sure it's every man by his dream getting their wings sent to a private school. Few jobs. How can human beings build something like this? It's unbelievable, man. It's just great, man, how, how it can be done. And a new East End. When will I get one of the horses? But what's the real story when Scotland's largest ever sporting event comes to town? We've consulted to death. Everybody's consulted us on the games. But does anybody really listen? It's 2011, three years to go to the Games. Four miles from the city centre lies Dilmarnock, where one of the UK's biggest regeneration projects is underway. A village Roman sports arena, as well as a village for 6,500 athletes are being built from scratch. And all of it here, in Dilmarnock in the east end of Glasgow. <laughs> I like your camera. <laughs> I'll take your bump down off. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Dilmarnock used to have over 10,000 residents. Now there's less than 2,500. It's one of the UK's most deprived areas with a life expectancy 10 years less than the British average. But with the games comes the promise of a new East End. I think the Usain Bolt's of this world. I think his status will actually be great for the area where Usain Bolt has walked in the in the in the shadows of, of young people in Dumarnock. With the community going through such a huge transformation, who will stick around and who has to move on? In Dilmarnock live the Folds family. Mum Amanda and five kids, including pianist Cameron. And Dad Darren, who spent his whole life within this half square mile. To the left is is going to be Athlete's village. Further down. It's going to be the Belladrome. In summer 2010, local entrepreneur Darren was forced to close his two shops and cafe to make way for the athletes' village. The end of a great year in the history of the man. He was due a big payout. It worked to a 65 grand a shot to go. Darren has now received his compensation, and ever the entrepreneur, he's now using part of it to fund temporary premises. So what do you think, Steve boy? The new business. <laughs> it's cracking. It was just a nothing. Simple as that. Temporarily. I think it'd be a bit silly to leave the man look at this point in stage. Especially living down there through all the rough years down there. The last 20 years anyway, maybe 30. 
So I would like to wait until the dairy is built back up. Then my weans will be like an early teenage age. Then maybe move my, my weans away before they get here, like a kind of dangerous age kind of thing. Next door to Darren's new shop is the community centre, the Marnock Social Hub. Get my war paint on, Stephen. <laughs> its manager is fellow East Ender and mum of two, Yvonne Kuchuk. <laughs> You're terrible. Hurry up, go. You're making myself conscious. Commonwealth Games to me is a catalyst. We're hoping that the new community that arises in the Athletes Village will put the heart back into this one. I've got a passion for this area. That's just an area I grew up in, I was born in, and I'm bringing my kids up. On your own, number seven. I'm looking for some. From bingo to gardening. Look at the size of the thing, what I've got. Computer classes and gala days. Avon has worked hard to turn this centre into the heart and soul of Dilmarnock. Dilmarnock to me, it's a small population, but there's a high concentration of issues here, whether it's alcoholism, whether it's drugs, misuse, criminality. But I see here remnants of my childhood where neighbours looked after neighbours, neighbours borrow cups of sugar. It's a real close knit community. Good, but all our hard work might be for nothing. With the games coming, this place is about to be bulldozed. So we're here. If we look at post games, and where do we draw trees? So where do we go? According to the council's latest plans, Avon's community centre will soon be nothing more than a memory. But she isn't about to take it lying down. We need something for the council. Once the plans are crystal clear, it can be here and say, this is the way it's going to be. Or, we get a plan together locally, and we go to them and say, you're obviously too busy <laughs> to come to us, so here's one we made earlier. Soon this whole area will be demolished, taking with it the last surviving tenements. Margaret, Jack and Ellie and her family had been living in this two-bedroom flat for over 35 years. I think when it comes down, I'll be a wee bit sad, because that was the only home we have known. We have no, we're homeless, and that's the only home. After a seven-day barricade, the family were forcibly removed from their home. I'm only a wee woman for the East End of Glasgow, and I've got rights like everybody else, but the council is stealing my house off me, and I'm going to fight for it, because I'm not letting them away with it. My fingers are in this door, in Amsterdam! British government's allowing this in this day and age, so assholes can run about in shorts for two weeks. Now the council have stripped out a flat. When you see your furniture lying in the garden all smashed up, and there were nothing wrong with it, do you know what I mean? It's sad that it's, it's happened like this. It didn't need to happen like this. Today, the family's tenement is being demolished, but there's still no agreement on the level of compensation. Taylor Proper Half has put us out. This is six weeks down the line. We've not had a penny or any correspondence for them. They're demolishing our close, our house, after 35 years. That's it going down. It's sad, isn't it? Sad <coughs> family home after all their years. Margaret and Jack are now appealing to the European Court of Human Rights to fight for the right to legal aid for compulsory purchase orders. Whilst they wait, they have had to move in with their son, just outside Dilmarnock. If it goes your way, we've won the we're watch. Won. If it's and no, 
you know, hopefully new laws brought in that people know exactly where they stand with compulsory purchase and they get a fair price for their property. Mm -hmm. No and juice throughout the street and say, that's what we think you're, you're worth. We're strong. Right. Isn't we? Right. At the top of the road they are building the game Star Attraction, a £113 million velodrome and sports arena. Jason Derulo! Oh. <laughs> Do you like that? Oh. <laughs> Catch up, bad boy! In January 2010, local lad Stephen Grouchy grabbed an opportunity brought about by the games and landed a job as an engineering assistant. My ambition is to become an engineer. But first I need to go to college and set my A-levels and that, so I can go to university. And if I play my cards right, and hopefully gain enough from this job, that Mikel Payne will do that for me. But with no funding, college never happened. And a year in, Stephen began to lose heart. It's a case of turning up, doing the same job over and over again. Every job is going to have repetitive mm -hmm. aspects, repetitive tasks. Aye. Now Stephen is back on course. I think we will gain a lot out of the Commonwealth Games, definitely. It's a rough area, Dalmarnock. I'm, I'm not going to lie there, I know it's a rough area. Um, it's not a good thing to see to get brought up with. There was violence and there was vandalism. Hopefully for the people it's getting going to be brought up in 2014, like they can have a good life and see the changes in, in Dalmarnock. Can't wait till it's finished, see what my achievements are going to be. <laughs> Stephen was fortunate to find a job on his doorstep, but opportunities like this are rare in Dilmarnock. It's a strange um, place, Dilmarnock. Previously, if you go back in history, maybe 10, 20, 30 years, people lived and worked here en masse. Now, there's no reason to be in these streets. It's, it's kind of a cut off and kind of a, no, Isolated. Young people in particular are kind of isolated due to the historic gangs. I think the Baltic Fleet, as they're called here, or ones we're called. So you've got kids growing up into that, what their fathers did, what their grandfathers did, what their big brothers did. So that kind of a taints their world. Glasgow's reputation for gang warfare hit the headlines in the 60s. Some 50 years later, Glasgow still has over 100 gangs. The majority of them tied geographically to parts of the city. Kilmarnock is home to the Baltic Fleet, Scotland's oldest still fighting gang. Something Darren's brother, Brian Falls, is finding hard to shake off. I mean, they're just a dumb armor for a Baltic fleet boy. It's as simple as that. You can't go anywhere. They think it's a Baltic, well, this mob but a Baltic mob, so let's go and do them. Yeah, that's in there, that's in my nerve system. What, what kind of gun was it then? It was a, a shotgun and a Beretta, 9mm. I went and shot a guy, and the gun jammed. And the guy shot me, which is it you preach you, so. That's a stab wound you're looking at. This was the other night there. Just a wee bit of misunderstanding. I'm just a hustler on the street. I make money. I'm what you call a... I'll get you what you want. You ask me for something, I'll get you. You know what I mean, Stephen? 29-year-old Brian wants a better life. Trying to be legit, but trying to be legit down here is like trying to rub blood off a stain once you're known. 
Hoping for a fresh start, he's moved his family out of Dunmarnock. I was brought up in Dunmarnock. And then my dad got to jail, my mum moved back to Brighton. I met Brian when I was about 16 or 17. Brian's partner, Jillian, is five months pregnant. She's worried Brian's past will catch up with him. I think Brian knows he needs to watch what he's doing now because there's too many people after him and whatever. And it's happening quite a lot now, so it is. Things happen all the time for nothing. For no reason at all, really. I'm fake because anybody comes to my own chat, but don't tell me that's that. I mean, you've got to be here, man, and I'm for two ends. I don't want this life anymore. I ended up with six years in the jail. I get it. I've got another three years in the jail. I get it. I get two and a half years in the jail. I don't want my son growing up to something he thinks he has to live up to. I want him to be the best he can. Doctor, lawyer, whatever he wants to be, I want him to be. It's nearly three years since the games were announced, but still no news of a replacement community centre. I can appreciate that a machine as big as a council, maybe they don't really know what they're doing. And there's nobody there saying, hold on the new, what about this community? And here we are, we de Marlock, who has ignored, trampled on, jumped on top of, has to fix it itself. Frustrated with the council, Yvonne has decided to take matters into her own hands and think big. We're at the point where I don't think it can go much lower. For us, the only way is up. And it is to get ourselves together, is to be strong and to get as much out of this as we can for this community. She's heard about a community that bought itself. Welcome to Renton. Near Loch Lomond, the town of Renton was once thriving, but by the 1960s it had become more known for its problem families. 20 years ago, the community decided enough was enough. All the houses you will see here are social rented houses. But what we've tried to do is to integrate the older elements of community in terms of age-wise with younger people as well, so it's not a them and a us, it's not they're away or there, the old folk are away or there, the young people never see them. We were told when we began this uh, this process that people wouldn't look after their gardens, right, you know, they would wreck the place, they, you know, they wouldn't look after it, and uh, just none of it's came to fruition because we haven't just tackled the physical environment here, we've tried to tackle the other social issues that goes along with that. Archie Thompson set up a development trust a charity allowing the community to buy its own land and buildings through grants. Everything that, that we're now looking at belongs to the community in one form or another, mm -hmm. either through a development trust, through a housing association, mm -hmm. or through a social economy business. Mm -hmm. And the other side of the road is uh, it's what they call an integrated health uh, living centre, mm -hmm. which the community own. Mm -hmm. And of course we've got a nightclub for the elderly, <laughs> right, right across the road, you know what I mean? That's fabulous. Uh, Avon wants to Marnock to follow Renton's example. I was totally blown away. That's the role model and the blueprint that I want to follow. They own facilities, they own the doctors, they own the care home, they own the local primary school, they own the dentist, they own the post office, they built the houses to local people's spec. Absolutely amazing. Plus this year they've just broke clear of £1 million. So how great would it be to have £1 million to invest in your community every year? In the 1960s, regeneration in Glasgow meant one thing. Tearing down the city's tenements that had become slums. To make way for a new vision of the future. But by the 1980s, the city began to reverse this policy, trying instead to refurbish these iconic buildings. Here in Dumarnock, the last surviving Victorian tenement is not so lucky. 
It's due for demolition any day. Darren and his mate Mark are taking a cheeky last look at the condemned flats above the shops, which he ran for over a decade. At the community centre, Ron has decided to copy renting and set up a Domarnock Development Trust. Oh, to do this, she needs buy-in from Councillor George Redmond. Since being elected in 1999, the local boy Made Good has been playing his part in bringing the games to the area. Somewhere between three quarters of a billion to a billion pound investment in this area. You know, I'm not saying that I, I'm delivering all of it. I'd like to think I've had a big influence in most of it. Luckily, George and Yvonne are childhood friends. Shades on. Shades on. And there's a phone. Phone it on your computer in the poker. She's also drafted in two regeneration experts to discuss future plans for Dumanuk. All right. Cheers. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. <coughs> Wrong number. <laughs> Kate. Main purpose of today. Yeah, and we've planned this meeting for the 23rd. Invites are all out. And what do we want out of this? We want to be clear in terms of the four we, of us. We want support for the trust and we want them to formally acknowledge that the trust is coming along. We invite them to 20 years and that's preferred model. In 20 years we will do it at a faster rate because of what's happening here and because of the buy-in support we've got. We have to make sure, because I know this model works, development trusts are, are, will work. Uh -huh. But we need to buy in for it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and to finance her dream, Yvonne needs support from the council and regeneration agencies. I think what we need to be making clear to them is that we, we are raising the bar high. Mm -hmm. What you are considering as legacy for, for the Marmot Park is something that we want to, to we try and expand them, on and, and, and can we raise make, a bit physically higher. make them act on what they say? Could you I can. That's what I mean. 11 o'clock on the 23rd. Stephen, I think it's important that people realise that it's outside, sun is that, that the sun is shining. You can't really get this from the, the kind of a smoke from gyms <laughs> of, of the world. The sun is back. We are so, you know, grateful. We really uh, appreciate that. I have been telling people that it's all been provided for them through myself, through the Glasgow City Council. <laughs> Avon wants a stake in the game's legacy for boys like 12-year-old Callum, who lives beside the Belladrome. The box for two year olds. It's all rubbish. I like it, you get somewhere else. So I can't be bothered walking that far to go somewhere else. Like two thirds of households in Dilmarnock, Callum has been brought up by a single parent. Dad thinks he can pop in on yearly basis, but that's not good for Callum. That's not what he needs. A year earlier, Callum left primary school. You say the bobbies all the time and then you... When you leave, you want to go back. Over the summer, he and his pals explored their changing neighbourhood. Did you write that? What? They say no, say no to the games. No, I don't fuck off. Now in high school, Callum's seeing it change by day. And she's down so you go for one of the houses. Downstairs and folding in here. And night. If you can look just behind me, it is Sir Robert. 
Owl. Mickey Alpine. Mickey Alpine. He will be building the Commonwealth. We don't know. Yep, right. There is going to be a lot of digging, so the more that there is, the quicker it will get done. OK. Thank and... you. Bye. Tagged onto the Games is around £2 billion to be spent here in the East End over the next 20 years. The ambition? To create 10,000 new jobs and build homes for over 20,000 new residents. Money which Yvonne is trying to tap into. Today she's looking for support for a development trust to allow Domana to manage itself. To help, George has gathered the city's movers and shakers. Can I just thank everyone for making the effort to, to attend this morning? Most of the, today's meeting will be taken up with the development trust and about how that adds value and quality to, to the work that we are doing. We went right and we looked at it, that's everybody on the trust in there. Kind of find a bit of love in the place. It's well looked after, the community love it, they've took ownership of it. The thing we've got, the advantage we've got over renting is three of the biggest regeneration projects in Europe are happening on the doorstep. If we can't build all this well. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the real point here uh, in terms of engaging with the community, allowing them to, to, to sit at the table, allowing them to play a full role in this, they will enhance the quality of, of what we are doing. We're supportive of, of, of what you're trying to, to do here. If in 2014 all we're left with is a beautiful collection of buildings, but no real change in the social conditions or the life opportunities of the people around here, then we failed. What we're saying to you is we need you to deliver the dream. This is so important. You can change lives, not just a legacy talk shop. You can actually really change lives. Oh, it's great. We're very lucky to have her working you know, in, in the neighbourhoods. We're very lucky that she's also got her own ambitions, you know, for, for that area. She wants so much more than what the local people want. I mean, I've only would, would want to take over Glasgow, you know, and then take over Scotland and then take over the UK and the world. I went really well. Really, really well. I can see it happening now, do you know what I'm saying? I can really see it, it take shape. And it's going to happen and it's going to be great and it's going to benefit everybody and I'm really, really chuffed. While George and Yvonne try to shape the new Domarnock, some EastEnders find it difficult to shake off the old way of life. A violent incident has left Brian with a broken arm. It's just this one, yeah. I don't know what I mean. I'm just telling my dear ass. It's, it's killing me. See, in the morning, it's so in the morning. See that? Mm. I mean, I could, I could see him. I couldn't really see what was happening. I mean, I could see him on his jeep, little bit of a big long, long road, and took it up near him, near him. I could see the, the back of his trousers, the blood just got in the right back here. And that's what I said, you'll be stabbed at the back. I mean, I pulled it down and looked, it was pulling. To his bum, just pure pulling it, and I was And why? Uh, I don't know, I don't know. I've got a few enemies from my past. Uh, I've left that behind me, but you know what I mean? Because of revenge and... That, uh, some people are still... still looking for me. Brian now wants to move his family even further away. Out of Glasgow completely. I'll just get out of here. I'm next to my dad. Uh, just to have met another life up there. But the last act of violence in my part. To my new baby coming, so I'm done with violence. I mean that. Finish with it. As the weeks turn to months, the Velodrome and Sports Arena begin to reveal themselves. Slowly, Glasgow's skyline is changing. It's now a thousand days to the games, and the city centre of Sports Day marks the big event. The 
In Dilmarnock, it's five months since Margaret's tenement was demolished. You see that white compound? My house was in front of that. Still in dispute over the amount, Margaret has yet to receive any compensation. I went to the primary school over there, it was say Springfield, and I went to the secondary school up here. I used to walk up to the secondary school, me and my friends. Councillor Archie Graham, responsible for the delivery of the games, backs the council's actions. The issue has been resolved. I know, that, I know that there's an ongoing case in terms of the level of compensation, but the issue has been resolved in the sense that um, we have the land that we require to get to build um, the new uh, housing estate in, in Dilmarnock, and we are building it currently. Clearly, you can't make an omelette without breaking eggs, so there is disruption to these communities for a short period of time while we prepare these venues uh, for the games. But the legacy that's left behind is well worth um, the disruption, uh, I would contend. Meanwhile, Dilmarnock gets some shocking news. Police have revealed that a man whose body was found near the River Clyde in Glasgow had been attacked and his body set on fire. Locals tried to come to terms with the horrific murder of yet another young man. This time, 30-year-old Brian Folds, Darren's younger brother. Brian Folds was discovered on the walkway to the river near Dalmarnock Bridge just before 8 o'clock yesterday morning. Strathclyde police say they're investigating the possibility that he was killed elsewhere and his body moved. Barely two weeks out of a stint in prison, Brian was not able to escape his past and change his life. He leaves behind partner Gillian and their two young children. Eight weeks since his brother's murder, Darren and Amanda soldier on with Christmas. You can imagine how this has affected him when it's his brother, isn't it? When it's his wee brother. It's something that nobody's going to ever get over, and it's going to haunt us all for the rest of our life, to be honest. Brian will never, never be away from me, Steve. Never out my heart, I think about him every day. Same to the rest of the family. And I'm sure that's what's happened to anybody else that's lost a loved one. They're just, yeah, I just keep picturing he's going to walk around the corner someday. Come on, baby. The family joined the rest of Dilmarnock over the road in a Vaughan's community centre. But uncertainty about the centre's future hangs in the air. This could potentially be my last Christmas here in the Marlott Community Centre. I would hope we can maybe campaign to keep it open a wee bit longer while the, the building work goes on. So all that's left today is thank you for coming. And have a very Merry Christmas. With less than three years to go to the Games, Yvonne's dream of a community buyout is looking shaky. We spoke to everybody, local government, national government, on that very subject, and everybody has been very, very supportive. Yes, great plan, fantastic. Let's hear more about it. So whilst they're all paying lip service to it, the clock's in countdown. No one's actually driving it forward. It looks like this will be the last nativity in the community centre. Darren's kids take centre stage. With Darren Jr. creating havoc.
New Year 2012, and anticipation of the Olympic Games and Queen's Jubilee reaches fever pitch. In Glasgow, the Sir Chris Hoy Velodrome and Emirates Arena are nearing two thirds complete. That's mostly all the framework and all that finish now, so obviously you see the big changes and the difference with the last time you were here. See how the texture that you've got the diamond shaped, curved, right round there? Definitely the velodrome's by far the most interesting for the outside works. But have you been this great already? Just think about it when it's going to be finished. It's unbelievable how small it makes you, because look how big it is, it's just massive. How can human beings build something like this? It's just, it's if like, it's, it's unbelievable, man. It's just, it's great, man, how, how it can be done. This job has just really made me mature and brought a new person out of me. Like, I've actually changed. I'm not the same person that I used to be at the start of the site. I'm more a man than what I'm a boy now. I was just a boy when I started the site. Stephen's Commonwealth job is coming to an end. His future is once again looking uncertain. I don't think I would make it this far, to be honest. <laughs> but um, really, I've, I've really enjoyed myself and like, I've learned and gained a lot of experience out of this job. They've gave me the chance that most people don't get in life and that. And they've gave me a great opportunity. Just hopefully I can take it at the end of this job and move on with them. As work all around the area gathers pace, oh, Daddy. Darren remains badly shaken by his brother's murder. Uh, he's not got a straight head now. His head's not clear. He's not as eye um, focused, that's it, as he used to be. He's not the same person at all. To be honest, that's my opinion. I don't know if maybe other people notice that, but I notice it. I think he's just heartbroken, isn't he, Monday? Just heartbroken. They have named their seventh child Brian, in memory of Darren's brother. See, any time you think about it, you don't believe it. It's if he's in a jail. Brian was always in a jail. You were used to not seeing him in that long spaces of time. But you always knew he's there, but that's what makes it, a, I think, a wee bit... It'd be easier than no seeing him for such a long time because sometimes you had spells of that. It's May 2012. Glaswegians are voting in the council elections and there is a new name on the ballot paper. Local hero Yvonne storms in with the second highest votes in her ward. I think what made me eventually stand was the suspicion that, hang on the new, no everybody's as passionate about this area as I am. And I think that's maybe the mistake we made, that thinking that other people cared about the ward the way I did, that they took it as personal as I did, and they were willing to give it 110% the way I did. She's had to let go of the community ownership idea. Instead, she set her sights on a community centre with a difference. A one-stop shop with everything from a GP to a nursery. So I suppose for me now, the gloves are off and it's time for me, Councillor Redmond. The top of agenda is legacy for the areas, in particular, the in the hub for Dumalloc, because that's what we've been talking about for the last five years. Yvonne is now a councillor, with an office in one of Glasgow's most iconic buildings, the City Chambers. Where I thought I'd have ended up here. It's a gorgeous building. Apparently the staircase is really famous as well, because I think the Vatican's got one, one staircase, but I think we've got one too. We've got three, so, so I'm told. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Morning. 
I just don't know how beautiful this build is. Do you know any of the history of this, isn't it? I, I said, think this is a t uh, <laughs> interior they were looking for in the new community hub. Aye, the fantastic one, too. Are you running the... To he's going back to the constituency just now. Like back to, to the board. To see, see you later. Old Councillor Redmond. Old hand at it. <laughs> Right. Sir Thomas did a lot of fart. No, it's bat. Somebody screwed. <laughs> it still doesn't feel real. If you know what I'm saying. I still don't quite believe. Maybe the penny's no dropped yet. I don't know. Um, do I, do I feel a fake. Do you understand? I don't know. But I'm in here to do a job, and I'm very aware of that. And every day when I look around the end, I know why I'm here, because I've got people in the centre who are living in poverty. Who, the gap between them and them is, is huge. And I'm here in the middle, trying to breach it, I suppose, I don't know. But, one, it's lovely, isn't it? Today, Darren's oldest, Cameron, is facing a rite of passage at the end of primary school. Cameron really will be leaving all her friends behind. I've brought for all the dinner ladies, all right, darling? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. How's that? Good luck. Where are you going then? Kelvin Tate. Oh, Kelvin's <laughs> the family are using the compensation from the shops to pay for Cameron to go to one of Glasgow's top private schools. I'm sure it's every man dies dream getting a brains sent to a private school. Obviously I think Steve the education or where your your brains are educated has a a benefit on a lifestyle kind of thing. A key factor in it. Why is everybody green? So I'm meant to be happy. Bye, guys. You're right, Rebecca. Hi. That's a cat when you are. I don't know you cry there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Callum's life is changing too. Recently, his mum asked his dad to get more involved in Callum's life. Callum Senior is now back on the scene. This time, hopefully for good. Dad! What? I see worms all over my hood. Or I'll be all snakes now. Are you getting a hang yet? You don't get any patience, but... See, I thought you're as fit as your parents. You see now, my dad, and he's doing their stuff for me and that. So, well, no male, but he's, he's like, he's, take, he's took me fishing and no he just wants to do a lot more stuff. But Dad, Callum, it's the fresh start he's been wanting for a long time. Best thing I've ever done. I was on the street for a long time, man. Tend to make mere screw ups and good moves, you know what I mean? So I'm just glad I'm back. You know, it's me back for good the first time. To celebrate Dad's return, Callum's mum invites him to one of the big events in the East End calendar, the annual Orange Walk. I 
If we do get split up, make a meeting point. What? Where, where, where is it going into the tune? Right. Oh. Glasgow's controversial marching season falls between April and August. Hello, Chad. Oh, fucking dear. Chad. Tens of thousands parade across the city to mark the defeat of the deposed Catholic king by the Protestant William of Orange in the late 1600s in Ireland. Glasgow has over 300 parades a year, more than Londonderry and Belfast combined. In this ever-increasing multicultural and anti-cultural society, we call upon the cup to stand up for our Protestant heritage and speak with much greater conviction and authority for the Protestant people of Scotland. Dilmarnock is having to change with the times, but some of the old ways remain. A violent dispute with neighbours has left Callum and his family feeling threatened. Some people just can't trust anymore what you used to be able to trust. So I think we might be, I don't know, we might be moving. In Edinburgh, Ryan's murder trial is nearing an end. Two brothers have admitted murdering a man and dumping his burned body near a bridge over the River Clyde in Glasgow. The remains of Brian Falls were found near Delmarnock Bridge in September last year. Paul Christie, who's 29, and his 27-year-old brother Adam pleaded guilty to murdering Mr Falls at a flat in Delmarnock Road last September. It's been 10 months since Brian's death. I mean, I let myself go for a while there. That's just be, be what happens, you know? I wasn't thinking about anything. But revenge, obviously. Um, that's me back and talk. Put my bar back up. Fat again. <laughs> I bet you can, eh? Touch your things! What? The London Olympic 2012 goal! With his life getting back on track, Darren takes his seven kids to the capital to experience Olympic Games fever. Have a lovely day. Jamie, you! Cheers! Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Fucking massive, I know. <laughs> Fuck. Actually, I'm clean, fuck him. Smile! Right, here we go. Hey, come on down now. Look at that, they're wet, they're soaking, they're black, and they're loving it. Stay hey, up the road where we come from. All you hear them is going on about Spain. I don't know what they're fucking missing down here, I tell you. What, you need to hold my hand, Kennedy? It's now less than two years to the Commonwealth Games. And in Glasgow, the official mascot, Clyde, a flying thistle man makes his debut. Over in the East End, the athletes' village is coming on a pace. Across the road, the velodrome and sports arena are bang on target for the grand opening. And down at the community centre, councillors George and Yvonne have had some good news. 
You all right, darling? The Games organisers have agreed to a proposal put forward by Avon to build a new community centre in the play park. It will be used during the Games as a welcome centre. It will be unique in Scotland. There will no big community campus like this. Owned, managed, every brick of the ground will be owned and managed by local people. It's a first true community mm. asset and a legacy asset for, for local people. I think we've been very fortunate that we've been able to keep the community together. Um, where you know the, the community centre, I think, has been critical for that. Did I think it was going to be as grand as that five years ago? No, I think I thought I was just going to get a community centre. <laughs> and I was happy with that. But now as we're getting more ambitious and, and we're getting greedy, we want it and we demand it. And we so truly deserve it. And this will be a wow building. Wow, and local people run it, manage it, own it. And then when they're unemployed <laughs> and everything's good and demand at post games, I can see I've done my job. I've got Meg's strategy. We'll lift demand out of the indexes of mass deprivation and I can move on to help some other area. So I see it. It's August 2012 and Darren's oldest daughter Cameron's first day at secondary school. That's oh, seven o'clock. Cameron is going to one of Scotland's top private schools in Glasgow's West End, paid for by the compensation from the shops. Nervous. She's going to a different school than all her friends and she's going to get a good education. I want to go to that school to get a good education and like just stick in at school in it. Feel better now? Yes. <laughs> Amanda's school run takes her through Glasgow's affluent West End. I'd love to stay up here. So I would. It's a different life, in it? I used to love the man, and do you know what? Honestly, I hate it now. That's the truth of the matter, I can't go at all. I was happy where I was and I didn't think I'd ever want to move. But over the last few years, I've been desperate to get out of here. Everybody you knew moved out. Um, plus when that happened to Brian, that made it even more desperate to get out. We want to hang about somewhere after that. City Centre, engineering assistant Stephen has also landed on his feet. Let's go. Thanks to his experience on the velodrome site, Stephen's been given the chance to work on another landmark building. It's a different project altogether than what the velodrome was. A different setup and all that, different system working. It's, it's really interesting, so it is. Designed by Charles Rennie McIntosh in 1896, Glasgow's School of Art is getting a 21st century update. Stephen's dreams of a career as an engineer are one step closer. Yeah, I start college in September. Uh, I'm doing the NC course in civil engineering. So I'm looking forward to it. It's just going to be a great experience. Everything's just happening in my life it's so fast. and It's coming so early and I wasn't expecting any of it, any of it at all. But to be honest, I'm happy that it's happening it's this fast. It's to get it out of the way and just gain as much experience as I can and hopefully progress in life. And I'm just, I'm happy right now and that's the way I like, that's the way I like it. 
Back in the East End, the Sir Chris Hoy Velodrome and Emirates Arena are finally open for business. Two years ago, this was just a muddy field. Now it's a world-class stadium. But it's a place Callum is unlikely to ever visit. What are you doing about leaving then? The place is rubbish, so I don't miss nothing. Since the fallout with some locals, the family no longer feels safe and are leaving the area for good. You do know that this is the most stressful time in any country life. You do know that, don't you? Oh, that's good smashing. I'm well enjoying that. Oh, you can. Steve, do some help us here, Steve. <laughs> And finally, nearly 26 months since its due date, the last tenement in Dilmarnock has knocked down to make way for the athletes' village. Heartbreaking, eye-watering, seeing it all. The heart of Dilmarnock, all of you, just like that. Just to think, Steve, Mount Granda Falls stood in that coma with a roll up, a can of soup me, and a walking stick for 30 years. Smack never the cutting it walk past his walking stick. Whoa! Fuck, see, Jimmy! I need to know what you're after. Aye, don't worry. I'm getting mine. Get out. Auntie, I'm doing it Next time in the final episode of Commonwealth City. Ever the entrepreneur, Darren takes over the monarch's last pub. I'm going to admire the view, but the pounds are coming. Yvonne's big dream hits a brick wall. I actually believed that people would be tripping over themselves to assist us. And local lad David turns his life around and hopes to buy into Delmarnock's future. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> the idea of me buying one house in Delmarnock is me buying my stake in this community.